You know, men, we want a job done right, and we want it done quick. What do we need? More power! Darn right, more power. As we saw from the last video, air assist is a must if you're going to be doing laser engraving. But, as my hero Tim Taylor always says, we always need more power. And thus, the X2 is born. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved my first air assist. However, there were a few things I thought could be improved upon. The first area of concern was the tube itself going into the nozzle. Being small and only having one of them limited the amount of air going into it and also increased the back pressure on the compressor. The second concern I had is the angle that the tube was going in and that it did not point necessarily where it was burning, kind of coming out more at an angle. So with that being said, I jumped back into Blender and did a little bit of redesigning. The new design has several improvements. First, and most obvious, I doubled the number of air tubes running to the nozzle. And just as importantly, I adjusted the angle slightly of the way the tubes go into the nozzle. This, combined with some nozzle redesign, allows for a much greater increase in airflow at the burn and or cutting site. Invariably, some of you are asking, how much increase? I unfortunately don't have the equipment to measure flow rates or pressure, but what I can say, and what I can measure, is how many passes it takes to cut things. The original design took between 12 and 15 passes to cut a quarter inch piece of Luana plywood. The new design can cut that same piece of plywood in two to five passes. The other large improvement is structural. By moving the tubes to the front, you can now reinstall both screws. That, combined with the redesigned nozzle structure, gives the X2 much greater rigidity. Installation is relatively straightforward and has the same spacer gotchas that you had before, though by doing two at a time, it is a slight bit easier. I elected to use two new tubes, but both versions are close enough that you can reuse the original tube if you are upgrading from the X1. For the original install, I also made a little bending jig for the tubes, but in all honesty, using the nozzle worked just as well. Either way, the tubes will still have a minor bit of crimping at the bend site. When you're doing the bending, make sure to go slow. If you go too fast or push it too hard, you will actually bend the tube over and completely crimp it off. Combination with that, if you leave the tubes protruding outwards slightly whenever you insert them into the laser, the springiness of the metal will help to hold everything in place. In the next step, this is where the gotchas will get you. Be very careful whenever you're taking the screws out and the back plate off, and reinsert the screws into the holes to hold the spacers and prevent them from falling out. Inserting the nozzle and the tubes into the laser, again, be very gentle and go slow. You'll notice that I have my hand holding the screws on top. This is to prevent them from falling out as you're moving it around. And then as I slowly feed in the tubes, I'm holding the board down. If you don't do this, again, you'll probably knock them out of the laser and the spacers will fall out and putting them back in is kind of a pain. There are a couple different ways you can determine the cutoff point for the tubes, how long they need to be. If you're smart, you could just measure it out based on the 3D model. However, I'm not that smart, and I did it the hard way and had to lay the top plate on there and mark it off of that. It still worked out, just a little more work than necessary. As before, when removing the nozzle to cut the tubes to the right length, make sure you reinsert the screws to hold the spacers in place. To cut the tubes, I'm using the same tube cutter that I had last time that I purchased off Amazon, which I'll put a link in the description. Another way you could do this is with a hacksaw. Again, just be careful that you don't collapse the tube when you're cutting. Go slow. As with the first version, I decided to install some plumber's tape on my tubes just to make sure they get a nice tight air seal. I don't know if this is necessarily needed, but I did it just because. Once all that is done, we can put everything back together. Again, starting from the bottom, insert the nozzle with the tubes, screw it on at least partially so it'll stay put, and then put the top plate on, and then you can screw everything down and make it nice and snug. 
keep in mind when you're tightening everything down that these parts are just plastic and the housing is made of aluminum. So if you torque it too much or twist it too hard, you can end up breaking it. So again, be gentle, be careful, take your time. The nozzle was designed so you should have no trouble reinserting the safety glass. Everything should fit in there. Once that's done, you're ready to put the bad boy back onto the laser gantry. Due to the size of the air tubing, no extra tubing is necessarily required, with the exception of enough to connect to the extra nozzle connector. That being said, I purchased some little splitters off Amazon, and that's what I used here to split the air between the two nozzles. So, same tube that I had originally, just split between the two connections. That's pretty much all there is to it, guys. That is the X2. As I said, it works much better than the X1. Uh, so much more power, about three times as much power. At least that's what it seems like to me. If you're interested in building one of these, I will put links in the description for all the stuff that I ordered from Amazon, the splitters, uh, well, just the splitters and the tubes. Uh, other than that, I will upload the models to Thingiverse worth the other ones, and I'll put that link in the description as well. If you guys do decide to build one, I would love to get the pictures sweetycraft at gmail.com otherwise i'll let this thing play out and you can watch some coasters being made you guys have a great day and i'll see you again